live here in the J Concepts garage with uh, J Concepts. And uh, it's about the third week in a row now we've uh, kind of hit a, a live session here in the garage. And uh, the first week we talked about the BJ4 and, and the different four wheel drive buggies. Um, last week I was out of town at the CRC event and uh, Damon and Paul kind of took over. We talked about new bodies and, and that type of thing that come through the industry with the different buggy styles and bodies. So uh, this week we're just going to talk a little bit of hardcore racing, I guess. Uh, you know, if there's some questions out there or different things that somebody wants to know. I kind of had my own little agenda as well. A couple things to talk about, I guess you could say. Uh, you know, we had a, uh, the race up at CRC, which is, for many people that don't know, uh, it's the 30th annual event there in Ohio. Something that I've personally never been to, uh, which is... Uh, to me, it was kind of surprising because I've been to just about every other event out there, but I've uh, never been to CRC's uh, Winter Midwest event, and, you know, it was, a, it was a great time. I mean, I've only seen photos and video. They've changed the location over the years uh, because the race is actually put on by the club called CRCRC, uh, and that's why sometimes the videos and the photos look a little different because uh, they're, I was a little bit... Um, it's always kind of a different location. But the past four or five years, out of 30, uh, it's been there at the Ohio RC factory. And, you know, it was a, it was a good experience. Uh, other than the weather, the weather was about uh, one and two degrees there when we were getting up in the morning. Uh, J.R. Mitch was there with us, uh, supporting J Concepts guys. And Allison and I went by, uh, you know, to also help and, you know, check in on the guys at the beginning of the year. We noticed that we had a lot of drivers at the event uh, beforehand, so we're like, you know, it'd be a good time to go up there and, and kind of check in and see how the guys were doing. Uh, the track itself was built, and it was actually a really cool, fun layout. Uh, they have a, two real challenging jumps on the track. One was a nice triple in the back section uh, that kind of led you into a chicane. Uh, the other jump section was kind of coming, it was kind of a diagonal straightaway in a sense, uh, coming down the center where there was a double that the guys wanted to make and modify, but you could kind of clip that the rear uh, occasionally there. So uh, CRC, great track. Uh, the surface, I never really seen it in person. I knew that we always used uh, our gold compound tires there. It was a clay compound uh, type tire, and you know, you know, it's that's that's what's continued. I mean, Cavalier came in uh, first race for us, and he had some tires already broken in and ready for that event, and you know, he went through. Uh, I'd say about three sets of tires uh, in the two-wheel drive and the four-wheel drive classes. He just kind of mixed it up in those uh, those classes and just kind of stayed with those three sets the whole time. And um, the race kind of, it started off not rough, but um, it started off more difficult because the traction wasn't really kind of come up yet. So um, I think where we saw Cavalier's true speed for us was in the main events, the two-wheel drive. I thought his best cars were his two-wheel drive, um, his four-wheel short course, and then stadium truck. And he ended up getting three seconds and a third, which was pretty successful uh, considering uh, the competition that was in there. I think he was really in the running to win two out of four uh, down to the third main, and it just didn't go his way. So I think uh, that's kind of how racing goes. I mean, people ask me all the time, like, oh, you have Cavalieri and you have uh, Rona Falk and Mayfield and Spencer and these guys. It's like... You know, they, they just kind of think like you know, you're going to win every race, but that's not really the case. Uh, there's uh, People forget about Dakota Fenn and his speed. Uh, you know, last year, uh, Paul was talking about this. He has to remind people that, hey, this guy won the Reedy race. And for all intents and purposes, he kind of dominated at the Roar Nationals. Uh, the guy won two out of his three classes there. Mayfield took the other, and uh, he won at the Reedy race. So... Um, <laughs> It's kind of overlooked at times. So um, Dakota Fenn and Jared Tebow, uh, they were very strong that weekend. And Dakota, I think, he got off to a really quick start. And um, in the mains, it became good racing. But uh, I think in the end, Cavalieri was probably the quickest in two-wheel. I think he ended up getting the fastest lap of the weekend. I believe it was a 19-4, uh, if I remember correctly. And... Uh, he was really happy with the speed in, his, in the mains, but some of the racing didn't go his way. Uh, I know Jared was really frustrated with his 
uh, main events, and I don't know if I've ever seen so many rough experiences in a row for Jared. Uh, he was leading A1 of two-wheel drive. I don't know if there's a video of this out there, but essentially it was it was his. A1 was his. Uh, he was just kind of finishing off the last couple corners. Uh, came across, uh, I believe it was, you know, a section. There's two turns from the end, and a turn marshal had ran out to get another car. Uh, when the turn marshal turned around to go back to his position, he accidentally kind of heel kicked <laughs> Jared's car, spun into the pipe, and, and Jared was stuck there. And you can see Jared was kind of like uh, getting a little impatient. Uh, the turn marshal got him. But then it was like a little bit of a panic mode because he could see Dakota and Cavallari coming. And there became, I believe, two cars almost in between. Uh, I believe Jared goes to jump the tabletop, ends up getting tied up with another car. Dakota goes by, wins that main. And there were just a lot of number of things that happened in those main events like that uh, to Jared. But um, that kind of, you know, kind of, I guess, tested his patience a little bit. Uh, you know, I don't know if I would have, he showed pretty good uh, restraint after those mains. And I think, I think I'd be maybe a little bit more frustrated than he was, but, uh, but good racing. Uh, we were really happy with uh, our guys racing well out there, the JP Richards and, you know, Brent Telke using our, our product there, and, you know, just a number of guys. We had uh, Drake Staub uh, winning in the uh, four-wheel 13.5 and the 17.5 uh, buggy class, uh, running the gold compound there. And he's part of the factory tracks crew, which they had a whole table to themselves, factory tracks guys. Uh, came and uh, did a good job. We had a number of drivers there. So uh, we had some of the guys, uh, besides the factory tracks guys coming from Michigan, Russ Bryant, these guys brought his monster truck out there, and uh, he's also a very uh, good 10-scale uh, driver. So uh, a lot of guys, uh, great race in the end. Dakota won three classes. Uh, two of them came down to the third A main, and uh, Tebow got, uh, I guess it would be a third, a third, Maybe got three thirds in a second, something like that, um, and uh, Cavalier getting three seconds and a third. So basically, those three guys had just swapped positions, and they all battled in every main. So uh, I was really happy to get out there. Uh, the guys were really it's great hospitality uh, from the crowd there uh, from CRC and uh, the Ohio RC factory. So we're happy to make it there and you know attend that event again next year. I know this this week they have the Nitro event starting. Uh, it hasn't been as popular in recent years because of sort of the reintroduction to the Reedy, the Reedy race. Uh, when the Reedy race wasn't around, I think guys were going, uh, doing a little more of the Nitro race at uh, in Ohio. But now since the Reedy's back, everyone likes to use that time to prepare and get ready uh, for the big race out in California. So, you know, that kind of um, kind of brings me to another point. I don't know if they have any questions yet or not, but... It brings me to sort of another uh, kind of another point. We had a big, uh, we got some big announcements still in RC. I know I saw today uh, Mayfield. Uh, they officially uh, uh, named him as a driver from Yugen, uh, which was uh, you know kind of a long time coming. Everyone was uh, speculating and all that type of thing, but it was nice to see they got the press release out there. And you know everybody gets impatient with rumors and things, but the reality is, is these things have to be done officially and technically Ryan is a, a driver for TLR up until uh, you know the end of the year so he has to um, you know stick to his contract and no matter what the internet media says and the rumors that are out there and, and that type of thing these guys can't announce um, any type of deals until it uh, really becomes uh, possible so um, you know Ryan was able to you know, get that equipment, get it built, and take the photos. And, you know, it's, it's nice to have a, a nice, complete uh, press release there from Mugen and, and uh, have a good driver with Ryan. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how Ryan races with the Mugen cars. Uh, uh, haven't really seen him run, uh, obviously, much other than a, an Associated or a TLR. You know, of course, time to time you see him pick up a radio on someone else's car and drive something else. But um, I've always wanted to see him drive the Mugen car personally. Uh, just to see how it would work and perform for him. But uh, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing that. I think a lot of people are. And, and uh, I think you're going to see the same type of results, but usually in a different package. Uh, that's kind of what normally happens in this. But uh, either way, uh, kind of excited to see it. 
Uh, we'll check in with a couple questions before we go on to like our next uh, race event uh, talk, I guess. All right, questions. Um, Alex K asks, who is your dark horse pick for the Reed race? I think he's kind of hoping that I say that it's him here, um, but the the tough part about the Reedy race, and I think if we talk about Alex for a second, I think Alex, if he could top 10 at the Reedy race would be a huge accomplishment. Uh, unfortunately, I don't see him winning, but uh, I'd like to see him win, but there's so many guys that want to dominate that podium position, and they really bank on the fact that they can do well in that event each year and I mean the guys are there practicing right now we're going to talk about that in a little bit but uh, you know it's it's hard to say who the dark horses really are I think if you have to pick the favorites at an event like this of course it's Ryan it's Ryan it's Jared it's Dakota and Ty Tessman uh, I think those are the five uh, I don't know if I'm leaving anybody out to me those are the favorites usually almost every year if I had to pick somebody in there uh, that could surprise. Dakota won last year, Mayfield won the year before, Cavalieri won the year before. Uh, you know, if you had to pick sort of a dark horse, uh, I guess it could be Ty maybe coming in with the new equipment, uh, maybe new, you know, new focus, or maybe the, the racing, you know, gods would be in his favor and, uh, you know, get those starts. Because really it comes down to how good of a start you get in those races and how you maintain them. Uh, in the past, he's always done so much better in four-wheel than two-wheel. And the other guys seem to be more consistent between the two classes. So in the past, I think that's what has hurt him in the points. Uh, so if he can improve his two-wheel score, then I think you're looking at a much more interesting race for him. Uh, then we have Jared Tebow, who's never won the event. And I think it's hard to say. Jared's driving never really is bad. Uh, he just doesn't necessarily, he usually has those two finishes that just kind of stack up his points too much. Uh, you, you can afford one drop per day for those guys and you know it's it's just such a crapshoot really. Uh, I think the past, well, all the races since 2012 or 11 whenever Dustin won that one when they reintroduced the race have come down to the last race. So uh, Dakota won last year. Uh, I think people at this point aren't going... He always comes in a little under the radar. Dakota doesn't really have, carry the, the same uh, weight. I, I don't really know what the right word is. Like The other guys seem to almost have a brand existence. Like They're coming in you know, with the big name and the big, uh, um, you know, the, the big racing skills or whatever you want to call it. Dakota is a little more under the radar, but I think if you look at his results... You have to take this guy more seriously uh, every time you hit the track with him because he's one of the fastest. So um, if you look at Dakota, you look at Ty Tessman, I think to me those are probably the two guys that I'm going to be watching uh, to see what, how they can do. And interestingly enough, this year we're going to be starting a four-wheel drive, not two-wheel drive. So that's going to change. If you're strong in four-wheel, you're going to be doing well in the points entering two-wheel drive. So before... Ty would always start in two wheel, end in four wheel, so his points didn't necessarily look as good at the beginning as they did at the end. We might see a flip flop there now where these guys are going to be in the hunt uh, in four wheel drive, and now it's going to be up to the two wheel to, to separate them. So I'm kind of looking, looking for that. Uh, of course, we got the Brian Mayfield effect. What car is he going to be running? How fast is he going to be? Uh, so uh, back to Alex. I think Alex could top 10 in this. We'd all be super happy with that for him. Uh, I always tell everybody they got to beat my best finish, which I think is 8th or 7th. Spencer's done it um, because he won the Worlds. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so if Alex can beat my best finish, we'll all be happy for him. He gets a free dinner at the end of the weekend. Uh, what other questions we got? All right, another question was from Andre Fosto, asking about Mark Reinhardt, actually. Uh, what team do you think Mark Reinhardt will join? Well, they just ran a race, the DHI Cup, where he was racing Yokomo cars uh, in off-road. So I don't know where he's going to end up in on-road so much. Is you know, There's been some rumors of the Infinity connection. 
Uh, you know, I don't know that I'm in a position or know enough to say that that's, in fact, what he's going to race. But I do know that he was running Yokomo last week, and he got a podium finish in two-wheel drive, I believe second or third, uh, running uh, carpet off-road, doing a good job. So at least he got an off-road ride for right now, it looks like, with Yokomo. So uh, that's what it looks like to me. Next question, Kyle, from Kyle Predmore. Mm -hmm. um, so who's the top dog on the J-Concepts team now? Uh, I think, you know, I think Mayfield's still our, uh, he's our top dog. He's the guy that's always delivered for us. Uh, it would kind of be foolish to say that somebody else could move in and replace somebody like that. Uh, he's been with us from the beginning and, you know, still with us here now. Even with the new, uh, the new guys, uh, they're established and they've had good results. But uh, to this point, uh, they've only had one result with our complete line. So, uh, racing for us. So, I think at this point, uh, Ryan's still the guy, you know, Mayfield's still the guy that's always been getting it done for us. And I think we still consider uh, for sure him, he's our top dog. And, of course, I, I think he believes it as well, which I think is important. And, and I think the other drivers honestly uh, support that idea. You know, Cavalieri and David, and I believe they, uh, they refer to Ryan as being uh, kind of our top guy. And, and I think that that kind of shows that they, they understand the connection and they realize. But that doesn't mean that on the track they're not going to try to overtake them. And I think that's the, uh, the challenge for everybody is to uh, be able to deliver uh, for us like Ryan has over the years. We make a new product, Ryan can win with it. We make this, Ryan can win with it. Um, he runs in 10 scale, he runs in 8 scale, he wins with it, and he does well. And I think people can associate and relate to that. So um, they, they see him and they, they see him as our driver, and that's important. So it takes a while to make that connection uh, that the driver is racing that product. So I think that uh, that's what everyone, that's the challenge for everybody uh, kind of stepping into any situation is to live up to the guy that, uh, that has been holding it down. All right, next question comes from Rob Sturgill. I think he's making a comment about your uh, body here. Where is your F2, Jason? We'll see it at the Reedy race. <laughs> this car is actually missing a body. And uh, we should have it at the Reedy race, Rob, so hopefully he's there. Uh, Rob's one of the guys that, uh, he's got a comment for everything on Facebook. I, mean, I don't know who's more uh, active on there between Kyle Predmore, Rob, Gotti Jr., Kirby Hand, those guys, they got a comment for everything, and it's always pretty funny to follow those guys because they have some pretty clever, funny stuff and keeps you laughing during the day, I guess, which is kind of what it's all about. All right, there's a question from Neil Lewis. Um, can you talk about Mayfield and Yokomo, and um, um, does, it, does it mean you're going to bring out more product for the Yokomo cars? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I think it's, it's tough to say because it comes down to... The number one thing is we want to make sure that whatever driver that we have, that we have the products that support the car that they're using. So um, whatever it is that he's using, whether it be the two-wheel drive class, the four-wheel drive class, he's going to have the bodies, the wings, the accessories that he needs to compete um, from us. And, you know, we already have some of those items. Uh, and, you know, somebody the other day was giving us a hard time. He only posts pictures of associated cars. And I was like, you know, we only have products for associated cars. I'm like, well, actually, if you go and look, we got carbon fiber for, you know, TLR, Kyosho. We have bodies for Kyosho. And we have, you know, um, like we just talked about, Yokomo X-Ray. We have all, that's been a big uh, project last year is to make sure that we had more things for Yokomo and X-Ray and, and the different cars out there. But... What the number one factor in all this comes down to the sales, and you know this car sells well, the B6, and it makes the most amount of sense to make something for the most popular vehicle, and you know people go in there and you know why don't you make something for you know this car and some obscure vehicle? And it's like hey, I understand wanting to have the the hottest new body or the, or the coolest wings for your vehicle, but we can't uh, put all of our resources into something that uh, it's not a good seller. So that's where we have to kind of watch ourselves because we'll get involved in passion projects also where we say, hey, you know, we want to take an RC10T and we want to make a body for it or whatever. And, you know, that's our passion side of it. That's not so much the logical side. So 
we have to balance that. And when it comes down to the racing cars, we're going to pick the ones that are the most popular, they sell the best, and uh, work the best. And that's why we have the products that we do. So certainly, as Ryan moves along in those classes, he's going to have what he needs, but we're still going to make the determination if, if it comes out to sell is, is it popular? Is it going to sell? Because at the end of the day, that's, uh, that's what we have to, we have to weigh that option. This is probably going to continue with the, uh, the Yokomo question uh, by Steve Richter asking if there's going to be a JC body for the, the YZ4. Uh, yeah, uh, we, we had that in our plans uh, to begin with, is to you know, make sure that we had a, a two-wheel and a four-wheel body for the Yokomo cars and the X-ray vehicles. So you can see right now we have a, a two-wheel body for those two vehicles, and we plan on having a four-wheel drive body also uh, to kind of complete you know, the, the two-wheel, four-wheel side uh, for them. So that would give us two-wheel and four-wheel for TLR, which we have now, uh, two-wheel and four-wheel for Associated, and then, you know, so you can see kind of the direction there is Yokomo X-Ray. Uh, Kyosho, we've had some stuff on and off. We don't typically do as well with the Kyosho products. We made some aluminum and carbon fiber for those cars and just did not have the best success with it sales-wise. So uh, that was kind of painful, but, and, and you never really experience that pain until you actually have experienced it yourself, but when something's sitting there and, you know, there's not a demand for it, um, you know, it adds up. Next question is, again, by Neil Lewis, which is, I think, a very good question. But will you make it over to the EOS um, sometime soon? Well, there's been some talk that there's some of our drivers are going to be hitting up the EOS races uh, for 2017, and I, I plan on definitely making one of them. Uh, we've looked at all the dates already, and I've wanted to attend already. Uh, I really wanted to go to that debut event for the B6, uh, but I didn't able uh, wasn't able to make that event. But this year we, we'll make it over there. I think our drivers we are scheduled to you know attend a couple of them, so I think we'll be there at some point. I'm not sure which one. Though. Another question was um, uh, by Cham Dasanayake. He says hi and. Um, his question involves someone if, if, if asking if someone's living outside the U.S. and wants to come to drive for a week or two in the U.S. every day and meet and speak with the pros and learn about the setups and driving, where uh, where would you recommend to go? There's really no better place to go, as people have found, is to Southern California. If you could go and stay near Huntington Beach, and you can kind of make a little trip out of it. You're kind of close to LA, Hollywood, uh, you're right there at the beach in Huntington Beach and what guys usually do is they come in a little early for a, a bigger event at that track and they spend some time going to SDRC which is in uh, San Diego and then they make their way up to OCRC and they race uh, between those two um, tracks. But those aren't the only tracks but uh, those are usually the two the guys seem to hit and then they'll, you know, they make the trip over to LA and Hollywood and, you know, they'll look at the stars and, and when I went there when I was a kid, I never went and saw any of that. I just went to the track, but I try to approach it like a vacation. But, um, for most people, that's probably what they would want to do. For me, I would just go, um, to those two tracks and mostly OCRC because it's, uh, you could probably you know, make a way over to Associated and see their... Uh, building there, take some photos, and that's what people t typically do. Uh, I think you, there's a Kyosho USA, you could go to Yugen USA, uh, TLR is out in Ontario, so, uh, or Horizon, and there's a lot of things that you can visit out there that, uh, that you can't do anywhere else. Of course, you can come to Florida and talk to us, but um, in terms of being in the, the mecca that's kind of hard to beat, OCRC in the surrounding area, so that's what I recommend because the practice is good. You can go every day. The track is dirt. Uh, there's a club race on Wednesdays, usually Friday or Saturday and Sunday. So right around there, I think it's Friday and Sunday. So I think they race three days a week. Go inside, see Jake. He'll hook you up, get you set up, and then uh, and you can just spend every hour there. Next question is from Aaron Rickow. He's asking about the release of the full aluminum B6 motor plate slash uh, gear guard. Yeah, obviously what he's talking about here is what's on my car is 
the full aluminum guard here, what we did is we've made two versions. Well, we have, there's really three versions. There's a standard motor plate, which, uh, which we've released, which is similar to the associated, just with the honeycomb pattern. And then what we did is we ended up uh, making a 3D printed uh, cover for the gear, which is on this car. Take the body off here. See, in this car, we got the 3D printed cover. So that you can use with a standard associated motor plate or our motor plate. Then the, the next generation will be a full aluminum motor plate that, you know, acts as the shield for the gear. Now, I've ran this one for a little while now. I've been kind of doing the testing, but we're already into the production phase of it. We're going to uh, sell this version because people have actually uh, expressed a lot of interest in this version, you know, the available in blue and black. Uh, but, you know, temporarily, if you're looking for the shield, I'd go with the 3D print option that has been actually really well received. Uh, you know, Cavalieri, Spencer, Brent, all these guys that have been running this, and it fits well under our S2 body or the stock body. So that's probably uh, the first option right now for the shield, and then when the aluminum one hits, if that's what you're interested in, um, I'd go for the aluminum. So I'd say February-ish. All right, Robert Gonzalez wants to know if there's an, gonna be an X-ray, a J Concepts X-ray wheeler body. Yep, we were gonna make a four wheel uh, XB4, I believe the name of the car is. There's a 2017 edition coming out. Uh, we're waiting for that 17 edition to come out so we can make sure that we have the latest vehicle. And uh, we'll definitely outfit it and the B64 uh, with one of our one, one of our bodies. Sweet. And next question by Chili Duncan wants to know if we, if we can expect a JC production. Uh, monster truck. No. <laughs> he could be alluding to uh, the new release that just came out from Traxxas, the Bigfoot 1 uh, vehicle that uh, Traxxas just released, which is obviously really cool. Um, if I was a kid <clears throat> in the old days, I'm sure I would have got that in a heartbeat. I'm still going to end up with one. I mean, we have boxes here already of Traxxas Bigfoots down here in the corner. But the big thing you got to remember about that truck it's still a stampede from Traxxas. It's two-wheel drive, uh, but it has a cool body. So it's simple. It's inexpensive. It's really fun to play with, but it's that's kind of the limit. You get it doesn't have all the you know like the trucks that we have that are clog busters or the trucks with solid axle front and rear four-wheel drive four-wheel steering. It, it kind of lacks that uh, part of it and a little bit of size. So it's still it's a great truck. I would recommend it to anybody. Uh, the Traxxas Bigfoot as your very first entry level fun vehicle. If you want to just take something on the road with you when you're on a trip or vacation to just thrash and play with, that's probably the number one thing. And that's why they probably do it. Uh, as far as us having our own truck, I don't think you're going to see that happen anytime soon uh, just because the class really doesn't have, I don't know that it has the popularity for us to make an all-out competition version so much uh, at this point. I would really wish it was a little different uh, because we have some passion for that side, but I don't know that there's quite the interest to justify us building a complete vehicle. Uh, it's different for Axial or something like that who have a lot of these parts, axles, shocks. They have a lot of these parts already in their lineup, so they can design a few things, put it together, get some licensing, have a cool looking truck. You know, for us, it's just a full ground up project. And then at the end, you have a four wheel drive monster truck that everyone's gonna be like, why are you guys making a monster truck? But from my standpoint, it'd be cool, but I think other people will kind of question it. Um, but if, to me, if it, if it ever exploded to the point where RC monster truck racing was as popular as this, or, you know, some type of, other on-road, the racing side of it, then I think we would probably be a little closer. Next question from Chris Blackwell, asking about, are those new JC colors? Probably referring to your shirt. Oh, this is our David Rona Falk Edition shirt. And we have a couple different versions of these coming out. We're going to have the uh, Ryan Mayfield edition, of course. We're going to have the Ryan Cavallari. We have the David Ronfalk. We're going to have Spencer Rivkin, Reno Savoya, 
J.R. Mitch. Um, there's six total. Uh, I don't know if that was all six, but uh, we have six uh, driver t-shirts with their colors uh, in the stripes to kind of, you know, uh, what was the big word they always use online? Commemorative. Get a commemorative t-shirt. So that's what we're working on. Uh, is having uh, these six t-shirts. So if you, you know, got some driver loyalty uh, to one of these guys, you can pick up a shirt that kind of, uh, you know, shows some loyalty. And also, uh, what we found is the, the colors uh, work well for other people as well. So you could, it's like, hey, your colors on your body or something like this, and all of a sudden now you get the matching shirt. So that's kind of what that's all about. All right, next question is uh, about, uh, from Randy Pike, asking, when are the 2.2 side smoothies going to be done? Well, we ran the tire called the Octagon at our Indoor National Final Race, and I think that's probably the tire. Those are 2.2, and that's probably what he's looking looking for, and I think that'd be a good option. Uh, I talked to him about it a few times already, 2.2s, and um, we're in production right now. Uh, we've already ran and uh, had some success, and Jeremy Mitch has done some running, Spencer, Brent, all these guys have run, Paul's run, and we got some experience with those, so that'll be the tire. I think the Octagon is what we'll see as our next slick type tire, 2.2, you know, early this year. Pete Phillips would like to know if there's any JC Claude Buster goodies coming up. Probably not uh, specifically for the Claude. Uh, we do have, you know, my personal Claude Buster, I have some carbon stuff on it and steering parts and titanium and stuff, but that's kind of stuff we kind of hodgepodge together over what we have here and handmade, but I think what we'll see is more bodies from us. We have two new bodies in the works for the I guess we'll call the quad size vehicle, which extends a lot further than just the quad, but uh, for the sake of the uh, conversation, we got two new bodies coming out for it uh, very soon, and we're in the decal uh, sheet mode right now, working on decals, and which sometimes is the longest part, but uh, two bodies which will fit the quad, and obviously we got the wheels and tires right now, we just released the yellow wheel, so uh, it's kind of different. Next question from Kyle Predmore again. We have uh, he wants to know if there have you had a chance to measure up the the sixty four D for product release. Hmm. Oh, uh, the four wheel. I was thinking of the two wheel. The four wheel drive by B sixty four. He's asking about the product. What you're going to see first from us is the body. We're going to have a, a S two body for the four wheel drive car. But we we uh, we're in a situation where we're not going to. Um, we can't release it before the car's out, and we don't really ha we don't really want to uh, release something or work on something before everyone else can work on it. So our number one goal was uh, make sure Associated had a great body for the B sixty four. They have that body, um, you know, and as the car comes out, um, has that stock uh, style body which matches the two wheel drive, and then we'll hit our S two body as soon as the vehicle starts to arrive and come out and then you know then it'll be like the b6 where the simoleum and the carbon fiber come out afterwards uh, that support the car so yeah i mean obviously we haven't really started on a lot of the parts but um, we're just now starting to uh, make the list of what we want to have and what we want to have available and of course the body would be number one on the list another question comes from chris blackwell would like to know if you guys are going to produce a carbon or alloy chassis for the B6. We probably won't do a carbon one. Uh, we have worked on an aluminum version, and it just kind of comes down to the pricing and what all we really want to do inside the chassis. Uh, there seems to be a little bit of... Uh, uh, I don't really know what the right word is, but people are still tuning with this car. This car is not at its 100%, uh, I guess, efficiency. And you're never going to see that until the car's been out six, eight months, a year. And we kind of want to let some of it settle down before we jump too far into an actual chassis for the car. But we have the B5M1, the honeycomb chassis, which was really popular. We only made a limited amount. But I think you'll see something similar down the road for this car, but just not in the near future, but at some point. Uh, question comes from Jason um, Cassius. 
Are the Firestorm monster truck tires bigger than the stock Cloudbuster tires? Yeah, we could probably actually walk and grab one. I could, yeah, there's a Firestorm there. We have uh, in the top right corner, I think, is a Cloudbuster tire. We can, the next one down. This one? The, and the, the white there. So here's the here's the two tires. This is the Firestorm, and here's the Clawbuster tire. So you can kind of see how they compare. I'd say the Firestorm's a little taller, and it's a little bit narrower than the Claw tire. Which this tire is actually the Firestorm. We took all the dimensions off of a real um, Bigfoot truck tire and used it to create the Firestorm. So it's very very close to a uh, Bigfoot style uh, monster truck tire with the shaved lugs. So that's why it is the shape that it is, the height, the width, and because it's based on the real tire. I think this one in their day was probably based off of the Goodyear style 66 inch tire. Uh, they made their wheel a certain width, but uh, this is still a very popular looking tire. I think people kind of associate this with the original look for the Claude and all the other vehicles, but when we went to the Firestorm, you know, we had an, uh, our vision was to make it like the real Bigfoot truck, and to do that, that was the size it came out. But you can see, slightly bigger in diameter, but a little bit narrower in width. But. All right, that's about it. So, uh, kind of going into uh, back to the racing stuff, I think uh, the last thing that we saw was uh, yesterday uh, we had a club race at OCRC. We talked earlier about. It was kind of stacked down there. Um, I believe it was the first time out they raced the B64 in public. Uh, Cavallari, Spencer Rifkin, I believe Dustin Evans raced the B64 last night. And Spencer Rifkin won four-wheel drive, Cavallari second, and I believe uh, Dustin got fourth, something like that. So the B64 was out last night racing, which was, to me, kind of a newsworthy, noteworthy uh, idea that I saw. Um, going on last night and in the two-wheel class uh, Spencer and Cavallari flip-flop so uh, Cavallari won two-wheel last night at OC and Spencer got second I believe Dustin was you know fifth or sixth something like that uh, Blake Bayett was I think he got third and maybe two-wheel and four-wheel so we got some guys down there getting in some uh, practice uh, of course there's more guys down there practicing that, than just ran the club race you know of course uh, the Mayfield's obviously been spotted down there uh, driving and racing, and we have other guys like the Tessmans are down there. Uh, it's it's packed, uh, guys getting ready for reading. So, uh, newsworthy, noteworthy things from last, you know, not last night, was uh, Cavallari and Spencer uh, looking strong uh, down there for Associated and uh, getting ready for the Reedy race. And it'd be nice to see, uh, maybe at the end of this week, see if everybody would uh, run the club race. It'd be interesting to see everybody uh, kind of kind of throw down and, and, and see see what happened but uh, kind of cool uh, guys first uh, race out with the b64 last night and uh, to me that was kind of noteworthy and then uh, this weekend we're going to be heading down to uh, our super cup first race of the new series in 2017 at beach line we talked that it's new astroturf track that'll be our first super cup on astroturf so uh, what you'll see down there from us is some new stadium truck uh, carpet tires. We got the swaggers for the front and the pin downs for the rear here on the, sta on the stadium truck. So we'll be seeing those this weekend in action. Uh, of course, we expect a pretty good turnout. Uh, we have our, uh, there's a little bit of practice Friday, but the practice Saturday morning, one round of qualifying on Saturday, one in the mains on Sunday. In between, we have our banquet, which awards the previous season. That's always a good time. And uh, if you're in Florida or can make the trip out, come to the Super Cup uh, Saturday morning, get signed up, run some AstroTurf at Beach Line, and uh, um, I guess that's about it. Last couple days and uh, the week here, uh, racing results and news, and uh, thanks everybody for joining us, the good questions, and see everybody next time, next week.